Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So on today's episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about my trickle telemania. So with that being said, let's get into today's episode. Okay, so for those who do not know what trickle telemania is, I'm going to read off a little bit of a description of what this is. It is a disorder that involves reoccurrent, irresistible urges to pull out body hair. The urges involve pulling out hair from your scalp, eyebrows, or other areas of the body. Symptoms include compulsive hair pulling and hair loss, such as bald patches on the scalp. Social and work functioning may be affected. Treatment options include counseling and medications such as antidepressants. Interesting. So, I say interesting because this is like a behavior. I really don't believe that you could just take medication and all of a sudden you stop pulling your hair out. That's really weird to me. <laughs> but I wanted to talk a little bit about my history with trickle telemania and also what I do to help trickle telemania and also just what that means to me personally, because everyone with trickle telemania will have a different journey with it. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about my personal relationship with trickle telemania. The first time I developed trickle telemania was the end of my elementary school years. I remember feeling extremely, extremely anxious in sixth grade. And I kind of went into this in my diagnosis video, which you can watch right here. But I talk about how as I grew older, I stopped stimming and began to mask more in order to socially camouflage into society better. And as a direct result of that, I started to develop pretty bad anxiety from sixth grade that carried all the way through the rest of my life. And a part of a manifestation of that anxiety was through trickle telemania. And it's really crazy that I developed this behavior of pulling out hair completely naturally because I never watched from anything. No one ever taught me to pull my hair. It was just like a natural stim that started to happen once or twice. And then I started to develop a very specific routine around pulling my hair that just brought such a deep sense of comfort to me. And I just started to do it more and more. When I first developed trickle telemania in sixth grade, I remember I would always be feeling through my hair and I would be looking for a specific texture. The way I like to describe it is it felt like a crinkling texture in between my fingers and so I would literally be sifting through my hair and using my fingers to feel every single strand of hair and every single time I felt that crinkling sensation I would single out that one crinkly hair and I would pull it out and after I would pull out that crinkly hair I would run my fingers through it again and again and feel that crinkling in between my fingertips and it just felt so soothing for me Sometimes I would even like pluck, you know, that white part of the root of the hair. I would pluck that off. And then sometimes I would even like use my nails and I would straighten out the hair so that it wouldn't be crinkly anymore. Sometimes I would even like put that crinkly piece of hair in between my lips and like feel the crinkling sensation on my lips. When I say this out loud, I know that it sounds crazy and I know that it doesn't sound normal but as a lot of you with trickle telemania will know this ritual that you develop for yourself you don't really see it as weird and I, I've seen people out there with like dermatillomania or trickle telemania that recognizes it as weird and they feel that deep sense of shame but for me and perhaps this is, is a part of my autism is I've never really felt ashamed of my rituals behind hair pulling for example that sense of shame wasn't something that was instilled in me at all until people outside of my world would begin to make comments at me. I remember when I was in sixth grade, I went to a daycare after school and there was a group of girls that I would hang out with and they would make fun of my hair pulling. And I didn't realize they were making fun of me. It didn't really register. I almost felt like, I don't even know. See, this is, this is a part of the autism, right? Is like, 
I know that what they were doing was bullying, but for me at that moment, I didn't register it as that. I almost registered it as they were just pointing out something that I did and the fact that they were like showing everyone what I was doing, I almost registered it as they were expressing like a sense of pride, which I know doesn't make sense. But at the time, as sixth grade Irene, that's what I registered it as. But basically, I would pull my hair out constantly at school, at daycare. And I remember at this daycare, I would pull out so much hair that there would be literally like a carpet full of hair at this daycare. And I remember the girls would gather all of the hair and store it in a drawer. And they were almost like making it a joke, like how much hair can we collect from Irene's scalp that she pulls out? And I remember one day, one of the the teachers at this daycare came into our room to check up on us and these girls gathered all the hair that they collected in the drawer which was literally like this much like you could literally make a wig from how much hair i pulled and they held it up like this and you can imagine how much hair that is too that i pulled out that made that heaping pile of hair and they showed it to the teacher and they're like look irene's pulling her hair and they were all laughing and i was laughing along with them because i didn't understand that they were bullying me and making fun of me and the teacher looked at me with kind of like a look of concern i feel like she just gave me this look like i don't know what to do about this because this is way in over my head and I'm not gonna address it and I'm gonna act like I did not see this and I'm going to leave the room, which is how a lot of adults tend to like to deal with things. But I feel like I wasn't forced to address this behavior pattern until my mom began to notice bald patches in my head, like actual bald patches. Cause part of my trickle telemania is I have a tendency to feel for those crinkly hairs in very specific parts of my scalp. Like th my favorite place to pull hair is right here at the top of my head. And I remember the first bald patch that I developed was at the top of my head right here. And then also I liked pulling from here as well. The left side of my scalp near like the back slash side. And I would pull a lot of hair out from these two spots specifically. And I started to develop bald patches. And I hadn't realized that I was developing these bald patches until one day my mom saw them and she got really, really upset with me. I remember there was like a sense of panic in her and she was very, very angry with me. She was like, why are you doing this to yourself? And she kept trying to like hold a mirror up to my bald spots. And I remember she even like took a camera out at one point, took pictures of the bald spots and tried to show it to me. You know, I feel like the way she was expressing her worry was not right. I feel like with kids and especially with autistic kids, you should try to be as patient as possible, not be yelling because that in and of itself can be way overstimulating for us. and it would be harder for us to register what you're trying to talk about with us when you're yelling and having all that emotion. I feel like that worry was rooted in the fact that this behavior can be seen as self-destructive behavior, right? Which I can understand why, because if you're pulling your hair, if you're pulling your skin, it looks like you're hurting yourself, which I guess it kind of is in a way which I think is a part of that sense of release and relief people feel when they do partake in hair pulling and skin pulling and all that stuff. I felt like after that moment where my mother was freaking out and got really upset with me, I began to realize, okay, I need to start masking my hair pulling. So my hair pulling in and of itself developed as like a mask from other stims and behaviors. And now I needed to develop another layer of masking over the trickle telemania. And as I'm talking about this, I can now really realize why my anxiety was so bad throughout my life. And I'm sure a lot of other autistic individuals can relate as well. Like you develop such an innate, thick sense of anxiety that you just feel like you can never shake off. And it's, it's because of things like this throughout your life piling on top of each other. Like, 
there's been very little moments in my life where I felt genuinely not anxious. And in those moments, I think to myself, is this what you're supposed to feel like? Is this what normal people feel like? Because I can't fathom living a life without anxiety, you know? But anyways, before I get off topic, I began to develop another way of pulling my hair that wasn't as obvious to being self-destructive. So to avoid having bald patches, for example, instead of pulling my hair out from the root, I decided that I needed to look for split ends instead and just pull the split end off and keep the hair in its follicle. And so my trickle telemania developed into that. I would try my hardest not to pull my hair in front of other people. And I began to realize that I started to do hair pulling when I was kind of alone and already doing something else like watching TV as like an extra stim for me. And when I pull my hair, I'm not completely conscious of it because it's such a repetitive behavior, which I will get into because this is something the doctor that diagnosed me with autism brought up during our session to go over his findings. But I notice every time I'm sitting or laying down, I immediately kind of result to hair pulling and just feeling through the, the hairs and trying to look for that perfect piece of hair to, to rip off or pull. When I am looking for that specific hair and I'm feeling through them and I'm going through that procedure that I have developed since sixth grade, it helps me concentrate, it soothes me, I could focus better. I'm in this like flow state, if that makes sense. A really good indication that I'm not even realizing I'm pulling my hair, like it's not completely conscious at all, is that one, those people in the past that pointed it out to me in a very mean way, but two, there's been people throughout my life that will point it out to me as well, like sometimes even like casually. I remember in high school, a teacher was giving a lecture and out of nowhere, he's like, oh look, Irene's pulling her hair again. And he said it so casually as if this was like something everyone knew and was in on, but I didn't realize that they knew because to me, it's almost like I couldn't conceptualize that people were watching me and like, registering that I pull my hair very often. And so when he said that, I kind of like had this really crazy existential moment where I was like, oh, people could see me? Like people can see that I'm pulling my hair? Oh, I'm pulling my hair? I didn't even realize I was pulling my hair. And then I remember when he said that, I looked down and saw like all this hair underneath my desk. And then I felt like a sense of shame for that because I realized this isn't normal, is it? It's not normal for there to be like hair underneath my desk from how much I've been pulling it. And at this point in my life, I kind of see it as a joke because like there's no reason to hate myself for it. I don't think I've ever really hated myself for it, which I think I'm thankful for because I definitely hated myself for many other things in my life. Perhaps that is a superpower of autism as well. Like things that society tries to teach you to be ashamed of, you don't necessarily directly understand that too much. So sometimes that shame doesn't completely catch on to you and you don't feel ashamed of yourself for certain things, which could be a good thing because different characteristics shouldn't necessarily be shunned or made afraid of and stuff like that. I think we should try to understand each other more, understand our differences more and understand ourselves more ultimately. Change what is harmful to yourself and to others if not, just accept it for what it is, you know? And so I kind of joke to myself in my head every time I sit down somewhere, for example, in my office, and by the time the day's over and I'm ready to go eat dinner, I could look on my desk and the floor of my office and see all this hair that I pulled out. And I'm like, oh, haha, -ha, time to just sweep that into the garbage can and move on with my day. But it's kind of funny to me because I feel like I'm leaving my mark every time I sit somewhere. It's like anytime I rest somewhere or sit somewhere, you can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be like a pile of hair that develops there by the end of those few hours. But anyways, so how can this trickle telemania affect personal relationships and romantic relationships. I live with my current partner and he is the first person that I've lived with when it comes to dating, which is a really big deal for me because I am very, 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 very picky about my living space and who is in my living space. But thankfully, my partner and I mesh pretty well together. There's some things here and there that 
bothered me, but because we have healthy communication, I was able to tell him the things that needed to be changed and fixed in order for me to feel more comfortable. And he loves and respects me enough to accommodate for me as well. And I mean, I don't really ask for big things anyway, so whatever. But immediately I noticed a year into our relationship that he began to notice my hair pulling. I never introduced to him that I had trickle telemania. I never pointed it out. So this is something that he noticed completely just from observing me and I feel like within a year into our relationship he was like you pull your hair a lot and I was like yeah I, it's just a thing that I have like I've been pulling my hair since sixth grade to me it's not a big deal I'm not pulling the hair from the root anymore so it's not like I have the bald patches but occasionally I do pull out the split ends and I would say that's like an everyday occurrence. But because I feel like he and most people don't know much about trickle telemania, he registered it as like a self-harm type of behavior, like a compulsive type of behavior. And so every time I would be going through my hair, pulling out the split ends, he would grab my hand and say like, you're pulling your hair again, please stop. I feel like he was trying to help me. But as I began to learn more about my trickle telemania and how it coincides with my autism, I had to begin to explain to him like, this is something that is not really harmful to me. It's not harmful to others. This is something that actually makes me feel very, very calm and soothed, which is so important for my mental health and my emotional health and everything. It's like a self-regulatory behavior. So I would appreciate it if you stopped trying to stop me and just allowed me to go through the motions of what I need to do in that moment to just feel good, you know, to stim, all that stuff. He understood and he stopped trying to stop me every single time I was going through my procedure of hair pulling. Which kind of leads me into the next thing I want to talk about, and that is my doctor that diagnosed me with autism. We had a session together where he went over his findings and his report in detail to me. And he told me that he noticed that I had a couple of repetitive behaviors that he noticed during our session. And one of them was I like to do a lot of things with my hands. So while I was talking to him, he pointed out that I was constantly rubbing my, my hands, constantly rubbing my fingers onto my skin, whether that's my legs, my arms, and also the hair pulling is something that I've learned to not result to in a conversation, but that's something that I kind of like fall into when I'm deeply listening to something or someone or watching something so i'm not actively participating but i have to be sitting there and ingesting content or information that's when i kind of result to the hair pulling he said that trickle telemania to me specifically is a result to my autism and those repetitive behaviors and in that sense it's different from other trickle telemania that other people may have that are holistic because my trickle telemania is something that i don't do when i'm in distress like others may do it's something that i do that is just like a stimming procedure and brings me a like a deep sense of comfort and gets me into like almost a meditative state if that makes sense i hope i explain that in a way where you guys can kind of understand those nuances and differences in there because trickle telemania is a disorder that you can have with or without autism same as ocd tendencies and ocd tendencies and trickle telemania are things that you could also have that kind of coincides with autism but like there's little bits and pieces of differences there that makes those disorders different within the confines of autism than it is outside the confines of autism so yes that's kind of a little bit on my trickle telemania and I kind of wanted to go into some things that have helped me with 
the hair pulling and also the lip biting that I do to not have to like do it as much. So first things first, I wanted to give you guys a lip product that I've been loving so, so, so much. And it's really helped me a lot within the past few months stop biting my lips as much as I am used to biting them. And if I could find a picture, I'll insert them here. But part of my repetitive behaviors began to develop into hair pulling, lip biting, clenching my jaw, things like that. For as long as I can remember, I bit my lips so much that I would constantly have these really hard scabs on my lips that never seemed to go away because I would constantly rip them off and bite on them. So it was just like perpetually there on my lips. No amount of chapter Lipstick could fix it. Lipstick will look crazy on top of those scabs too because it just looks so dry and disgusting. I couldn't stand lip glosses and just like sticky things on my lips as well because like if the wind blew my hair into the lip product and it got stuck in there, it was game over. Like that texture made me want to yak. But basically it was so hard for me to find lip products that I actually liked and could withstand until I found this gem. So these are the lip products I've been using for a couple months now. They're called Romand and they are lip tints. They're Korean lip tints. I absolutely love them so much. I apply them and they feel like a light lip gloss when you first apply them and then it dries out into like a lip tint. So it's not matte as like the American matte lipsticks that were really popular a few years ago, but they're not lip glosses where they're constantly sticky. You feel the texture of your lips. It doesn't feel like you're wearing anything and the color is beautiful. It's so light. It fades naturally and you could layer them to be more vibrant. I just love it and I love all the colors that they have. They're so natural, so beautiful. I just, I cannot rave more about this product. I also love the smell. It's just, I feel like a good way to know that your product is really, really, really good is if an autistic person is in love with your product because once we love something, we are so loyal because we pay attention to all these little details of like how this product works and if it aligns with a lot of our needs it's just like a holy grail you could probably watch back on all my videos and some of my tiktoks for the past few months and see all the lip products i've been wearing is from this brand the romand lip tint i bought this product because i genuinely love it but i realized that because i was wearing this so often i would even wear this after i brushed my teeth at night and and i would put this lip tint on before going to bed and my partner partner would even make fun of me and he's like you're about to go to bed why are you putting lipstick on and I was like because one I love this product it puts a little bit of color to my lips and also it helps me with my lip biting I noticed after a month that my lips didn't have scabs anymore I wasn't constantly biting my lips because I had product on it and indirectly it was fixing my lip biting behaviors which is huge for me so many positives right I love the way it feels I love the way it looks but also so it was fixing a behavior that resulted in like scabbed, chapped lips all the time. And that's something I always wanted to fix, but had a hard time doing. So Roman lip tints, you guys, you have to go out and try this out. I've gotten so many comments in my videos every now and then asking what I'm wearing on my lips. And this is it right here. I will tell you guys what colors I have. My favorite one is number 13, which is this one, and it's called Eat de Tori. And I love it because it's like a darker, neutral, warm terracotta type of red slash pink, which I feel like looks so good on like Asian skin tones. When I layer it more, it looks a little bit darker, which I feel like really suits my complexions right now because it's winter time. So my skin got paler and I have darker hair right now. So that's my favorite. And then these two, one is called number 11 pink pumpkin. This one's it's a lighter pink and I have this one on right now. So it kind of looks like a corally, pinky kind of color. And this is another reason why I love this brand is because I'm so picky about lip colors. I feel like with American lip products, things are either way too pink or way too red or way too orange. I always want there to be like an in-between color of like pink 
red and orange together, like a terracotta type of color, which I freaking love so much. And it's just so hard to find that specific color tone in American lip products, but within Korean lip products, it's so common. Like they basically have that specific terracotta color in a bunch of different shades, which is like heaven for me. And then the last one I have is a little bit more of a brownish color and it's called number 20 dark coconut. And this one's a more of a neutral color. That is the color of my lips. And I like to wear it when let's say I have like a colorful outfit on and I don't want the other lip colors to compete with it. So I would wear this one. It's more brown as you can see. Yeah, Eat Tatori, Pink Pumpkin and Dark Coconut. My favorite lip products right now. So yeah, go out and get yourself one. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Korean beauty product websites, I'm sure. And just enjoy, live your life and look beautiful with these lip products. I love them so much. I also just love the packaging. It's so aesthetically pleasing, so simple, so minimalistic. I just love it. I love it. So the last thing I want to talk about today is hair stuff because this whole video is about trickle telemania and hair pulling, right? I recently found out that I do not have naturally straight hair, which is news to me. But now that I'm reflecting, I don't know how I'm just finding out that I have naturally wavy hair. If you're going to talk about it in the scale of waves and texture, I feel like I have one C slash two A waves. I will also insert pictures and videos of my naturally wavy hair now that I'm experimenting with actually putting in wavy hair products into my hair to bring out those natural curls rather than straightening or ironing my hair, doing any sort of heat products. So I'm experimenting with that right now, you guys. So once I have it down and I know exactly how to bring out my natural hair texture, texture and hair curls out, I will make a very specific video on how I do that because I feel like there's not enough videos about that on YouTube. Specifically with Asian women that have naturally wavy hair, there's not many Asian women that make videos on what their routine is to bring out those curls. I feel like all the videos I've been watching are just like white girls, Hispanic girls, black women and everything in between all the mixes and whatever. But like not many Asian women I've seen have made their curly hair routine. And I feel like the way that our curls are naturally are so different because you do have like a semblance of that straight hair mixed in with the waves and it's confusing to deal with that. But anyways, you could kind of see here my natural curl. On top, it's not as curly as it is on the bottom. I'm trying to figure out how to even it out more and perhaps I can't but we'll see if I were to lift up this like initial layer of hair you could kind of see those natural curls and I feel like a part of my natural texture starting to come out more and more is I've been growing out my natural hair for over a year now probably the past two years if you will see like old videos or pictures my hair had like pieces of blonde in it I was like fully blonde for so long I'll insert pictures as well but when I was bleaching my hair constantly, the texture of my hair was more straight. But as I started to grow my natural hair out and cut off those blonde pieces, I started to realize my hair was so naturally like curly and wavy. And one time I showered and I came out and there's this really curly piece of hair that just stuck out. And when I saw this piece of hair, I was like, is my hair curly? Like, is this natural? And so that's when I started to experiment with curly hair products, curly hair routines. And that's when my natural curl started to come out more and more and I was like oh okay so I don't have naturally straight hair like most Asian women do I have naturally wavy hair and a good indication to notice whether or not you have naturally curly or wavy hair is if you brush your hair out and it's frizzy and poofy it's a good indication that that frizz or poof is wanting to turn into a curl but you're not giving the products that it needs to turn into a curl a lot of you have been asking me through through my comment section and also DMing me privately what hair products I use because although I never highlighted my hair at all or talked about it, for some reason, other women out there really like my hair, which is very flattering. Like, thank you so much for anyone who went out of their way to ask me what products I use. So for those who are curious, I use a brand called Moari and their hair products have a lot of natural ingredients, which you could literally smell when you use their products. Their shampoos and conditioner smells so 
yummy. It's not overly fragrant. It almost has like a natural fragrancy to it, which I like as well because I have a very sensitive sense of smell. When my partner first smelled this product, he told me it almost smelled like Sprite or juice. And I agree with him. And every time I use this product, I almost want to like drink it because it smells so good. It has like almost like a really light citrusy type of smell. So like if you were to smell Sprite, for example, <laughs> that's kind of like what this smells like. And on the bottle, they list off all the ingredients that they use, which is not a long list, which is a good thing. It's paraben free, fragrance free, cruelty free, silicone free, SLS free, GMO free. And I find using this product has helped my hair grow so much naturally that using other hair products hasn't really necessarily helped me with. If you were to look at my hair growth, let's say a year ago, I had hair that was like up to here. I was still growing out that blonde hair and I felt like I kept that hair length for years and years. I couldn't seem to grow my hair the way that I wanted to. Ever since I started using their products, it's almost like I grew like inches of my hair just out of nowhere. This basically made me realize how important it is to use hair products that is as natural as possible to foster hair growth a lot better and to nourish your hair. My hair didn't used to be this long for like years and out of nowhere, it just grew so much and it's so healthy. You can see all of those natural textures and curls coming back. So this is how long my hair is, if I could show a side by side. I find that taking care of my hair more and also bringing out those natural textures of waves in my hair has actually helped me more with my hair pulling because if my hair is naturally healthier and I'm taking care of it with like products that make my hair feel really good, I naturally feel less of a need to go in and pull the hairs out. For example, how can I pull out split ends if my hair just objectively doesn't have as many split ends as it used to have when I was bleaching it and when I was curling it and when I was using like $2 shampoo and conditioners compared to what it feels like when I'm actually taking care of my hair and it just objectively feels good. And I've been noticing that I just haven't been pulling my hair out as much as well. When I am using products that feels good, smells good and all of that stuff, it gives me that stim that I need to touch my hair when I'm like putting the products in in. But yeah, if any of you are interested in Maori products, they have a shampoo, they have a conditioner, and they also have an ultimate growth spray as well. And they also have a repairing hair mask. So these are some of their products. But yes, if any of you are interested in purchasing any of these products, I will leave a link to Moari's website in my description box. If you follow that link, you will get 15% off your entire purchase. I will also leave my 10% off coupon code for you guys. So make sure you guys put the thought spot at your checkout for 10% off your entire purchase. And let me know how you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoy Moari's products and I hope your hair enjoys Moari's products. I know for a fact that my hair has been really enjoying it, my scalp as well. But yes, that is it for today's video. Make sure you guys comment down below your experiences with trickle telomania, what has helped you with your trickle telomania. And if this video was helpful to you at all, make sure you give this video a like. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I make new videos every single week. I will see you guys on next week's video. Bye guys.